everyone, it's Lou here, the Rocker Witch, with the Only 10 Decks Challenge. So this challenge was started by Katie Flowers. She was inspired by beauty bloggers who were doing like, if I could only have 10 eyeshadow palettes, etc. So she kind of modified it to be like, if you could only have 10 decks. Now, this is not just 10 tarot decks. This is 10 decks, period, like tarot, oracle, Lenormand, whatever. Oh my God, I was like, that is, I don't know if I could choose. But I sat down and I thought about it and it was super duper challenging. So first of all, thank you, Katie, for doing this challenge. I'm gonna link her original video below. I've also been seeing some other people do this and it's a lot of fun to watch. So I really had to sit down and think about this particular one. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I can decide what my 10 favorite decks out of all the decks are. But I decided to tackle it as in like, okay, if I could only have 10 decks, I would want a variety of different types of decks. So I kind of broke it down into, okay, what kind of types of decks would I need? And which do I think is the best or would serve me the best out of those decks? So this, this is what I've came up with. This may change in the future. This is what I'm thinking about for now. So let's get on with this. So first of all, we need a Rider weight. We need a Rider Waite Smith deck. We need a tarot deck. I have here my handy Radiant Rider Waite in the tin, which is my favorite version of the, the Rider Waite. Why can I not say that today? So this is one I have in my purse all the time. It's in a tin, so I don't mind if it gets like kind of bashed around in my purse. It is not, it is like a bit of a mini deck. So it's actually good for doing big spreads and things. Um, I like this particular deck out of the Rider Waite versions the best because I like the colors. I like these bright colors. Um, I don't really like some of the more muted tones. Um, this one I think serves me best. And I mean, it's a tarot deck. It's sort of the standard tarot deck that most people use. It's great reference for teaching. Um, it gives, you know, super clear messages. It's iconic. Like, you know, you got to have a Rider Waite Smith deck. This, you know, again, it goes with me everywhere anyway. It's in my purse all the time. So it's just like, it's perfect. Um, so this way I have at least a tarot deck and um, I can do, I can do readings with it. So there we go. Now I did put in another tarot deck because, you know, I like a little more variety than just the Rider Waite. And so the other deck I picked is my uh, Mythic Tarot. And I have it here in this beautiful wooden, wooden box that my wonderful husband made me. He's so talented. He makes these tarot boxes. He's just, yeah, he's awesome. So I have my Mythic Tarot. This is the old Mythic Tarot, not the new one. The new Mythic Tarot, the artwork just, let's just face it, it just isn't as good. But this is the first deck that really helped me to learn the tarot. It has, you know, Greek mythology in it, which I love. And it is, again, an excellent reader. Very, very clear readings. Love the artwork in this. This is not the one with the black back, which I did originally have back in the 90s and then something happened to it. Um, this is the one I think that must come out either in the later 90s or the 2000s, but it's, um, I don't really care if the back is not black, but it's just a beautiful deck. The artwork is so lovely. Um, and it's a deck that, like I said, it was one of the first ones that I had when I was learning tarot back in the 90s. And I just loved the, the, not just the artwork, but also because I knew Greek mythology, I could connect the, um, the people in it, the characters in it, the gods in it, as well as the stories. And it really helped me to learn the tarot and to memorize the meaning. So I have a space in my heart for this deck. And um, this way I'd have two tarot decks at least to work with if I could only have 10 decks. So the next thing I thought about was, well, I'm gonna need some kind of cardomancy because the way that I read, if you've gotten a reading from me before, is I combine Tarot and Lenormand. I read with the two of them together. And so this, I love this deck, don't get me wrong. I do have another deck that I would probably say is my favorite. However, I pick this deck because it's, it's a Lenormand, but it also has other cards in it. And what I mean is I have here the Maybe Lenormand. So this is a 52 card deck. So I could take out the extra cards and just have the 36 Lenormand, or I could add more. And it is like a lovely deck. It's very whimsical, it's fun. I'm gonna open it here. All right, so you've got your book in the front. And then it's got, I really hate it when, when 
um, publishers do this. Oh, they're all over the place, but when it comes in a tray where they separate it into two there, I have to hold it so that I don't, I don't lose them everywhere. So I really hate that, but the deck itself is great. So you've got all of your classic kind of cards. Like you've got the tree. It's very clear as well. Very, very clear. You've got the clover, but then you have some of the other cardamancy cards that you often find in more German style decks. Like I've got here, the cat, I have, the Cupid. Um, where's another one? The Broken Mirror. The Train. So you can see like it has some variety in it. So I can just take out the 36 cards for a straight Lenormand or I could add more for more variety. So I think for Cardomancy that is my Cardomancy deck. Next is runes. So I, um, I read with rune cards. I have rune cards rather than, I do have like the tiles, but I don't really use them. I tend to use my witches. I think this is called the witches runes. I've lost the box ages ago because this is from probably the nineties or early two thousands, but they're cards. This is Nigel. I can't remember his last name, who the artist is, but love his art. He's the same artist that did the rose tarot that just came out recently. So you've got these runes, uh, with the card, I think really depicts what the rune means, um, which is really wonderful for learning runes. This helped me to learn runes. It is a wonderful deck. Every New Year's, I do a rune reading for the year. So I definitely wouldn't want to miss out on that. And I think runes are great in giving you the overall energy of what's going on. They're not as specific as cardomancy or tarot, but they do have give you a good sense of the kind of energies that are at work in your life. So I would want a set of runes and I wouldn't want to be without my wonderful uh, rune deck here. So another kind of deck I like to work with is, um, is like God and Goddess type decks, like decks with deities in it, decks with uh, gods and goddesses from different cultures. Now, this was really hard because I, I really like working with these, but I did pick the Goddess Oracle. Again, a lot of these are classics I've worked with for a long time. This is probably, I still think, hands down the best Goddess deck. This was the first Oracle deck I ever bought, and I still have it. Artwork is wonderful, and I think really honors the different cultures that these gods and goddesses, or I should say gods and goddesses, they're all goddesses, goddesses come from. I think it's beautiful, and I... Um, you know, sometimes I'd, I'd like to pick a goddess card for my altar, and if I could only have one goddess deck that I could do that with, then I would definitely pick this one. So after that, I was like, well, I like fairy decks as well. So I have here my favorite fairy deck. Again, had it for ages, which is the Brian Froud Fairy Oracle. Now, this is a deck people have mixed feelings about. Some people... A lot of people love the artwork, but some people find they just can't work with the fairy energy. I've been lucky in that I have worked with this deck for years and years and years, always had wonderful, wonderful readings with it. I think that this is probably the closest to how I see fey energy. Again, beautiful artwork, but also I think this deck has a lot of variety in it. I think it has like 50 or 60 some cards, so it is fairly chunky. Um, it has a wonderful Fae vibe. I love working with this in like the spring and early summer. So I wouldn't want to miss out on having some, some Fae energy um, in my readings and on my altar. So I, I have that one as well. Next, I would want an animal deck. So I have, again, I have a few animal decks. I love animal decks. Love, love working with animal decks. So this is the first animal deck I ever got, which is the Druid. It is the Druid Animal Oracle. Um, Will, I think his name is Will Wheaton, is the artist. His artwork is beautiful, gorgeous. Now this is based on English animals and living in like a Northern climate. Most of these animals are in my environment too. So these are all animals I recognize in the world that I live in. So I quite like this because these are animals that I would probably see in nature or on the farm or wherever. The artwork again is beautiful. And um, I mean, there's dragons in here. I mean, I don't see dragons, right? 
but I do like the energy that this, this deck has. I love the variety of animals in here. Now it's not the biggest animal deck that I have. I have another one that's got like 60 some cards, but I really love this deck. I find this deck to be very, very sacred. And again, this is something that I might pull a card and it goes on my altar or I do readings with it. So it is a deck I don't want to not have in my collection. And then, of course, if we're working with animals, we also want to work with plants, right? So my favorite plant deck is actually the Wisdom of the Trees Oracle. Again, they've had this one for a little while. Um, not all of these are trees that grow in my area. I live in uh, the, on the Canadian prairies. Uh, you have to have hardy trees, that's for sure. So a lot of these trees like don't. But I still love learning about them. I love the variety of trees that they have in here. It has like this very like soft but wise energy. I love juniper. I love I love juniper flavored things. Starbucks had this juniper coffee that they had one Christmas. It was just lovely. Anyway, side note, talking about juniper. But it's I find that I like doing readings with an animal card and a plant card. I find they really kind of balance each other out. I love the energies that they have. I find the animal cards have more of like an active energy and then the tree cards are more of a receptive type of energy. So love working with this. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to want a plant deck. And if I had to choose a plant deck, I would definitely pick this one. So then um, I thought, you know, I've got fairy, I've got a goddess, goddess oracle, I've got a fairy oracle. I also want an angel deck, but when I looked at my angel decks, I actually was like, mm, I don't know, because they're um, the angel decks I have are like the Doreen Virtue ones, which nothing wrong with them, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to be without this one, and that is the Fallen Angel Oracle cards. This deck tells you the truth, tells you what you need to hear, even when you don't want to, and I think it's great for like, you know, what people call shadow work or whatever. It's great for kind of looking at some of the ugly things you don't want to look at, it's great for kind of the darker time of year. It's definitely got a spooky vibe to it. Um, and you know what? You want to balance out some of the sweetness with a little bit of, you know, a little, a little bit of darkness too. It's definitely a gothy deck. So love this deck. I find this is the best fallen angel or demon deck that's out there. I think some of the other ones are a bit more sensationalized, but this one actually has really loving messages. And it also like kind of warns you where your blind spots are or, you know, maybe what's going on behind your back you're not seeing or maybe what you should avoid. So uh, I don't want to be without a little bit of that in my life. So got that. And then number 10, I thought, you know what? I want just like a general Oracle deck, like not one that's associated with gods or goddesses or anything. And so I thought about, I really like Colette Baron reeds decks. And I think one of her best ones is the Enchanted Map. And this is the newer edition. But I find that this gives you like really good sort of day-to-day -day general kind of guidance or guidance that um, you can put like an oracle with like a tarot deck. So I use, have used this in the past and still do occasionally use it as a daily draw deck because I find it gives like just very good advice and it isn't overly sweet either. It is an oracle deck, but there is shadow in this deck and there's, I like that it has both upright and reverse meanings. So it could kind of, you know, like give you a little bit of an idea of what the energy of that day is like, or give some advice when you are doing a tarot reading, like you can use it as an advice card. So those are my top, well, not top 10, but if I could only have top, if I could only have 10 decks, these are the ones I'd have. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are, what you think. I'd also love to see if you're making these videos. I'd love to see what your 10 decks are. Again, thank you, Katie, for doing this tag, for starting this. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And as always, peace and love. Thank you.